people gonna think of our new buttermilk crispy chicken? Let's find out. It's probably the best sandwich I've ever had. It's super crispy, but it's also really juicy. So would you guys come back? Yep. Yeah, of course, yeah. definitely. Well, here's our car. The location is on the back. Okay. It's McDonald's. What? What? <laughs> what? Oh, get out of here. No way. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Try some buttermilk crispy chicken. It's right around the corner at McDonald's. Buttermilk? <laughs> Good morning. It's Brad Atwell on WCOU Sports with Ask the Coach, Coach Jeff Griffith from Barron County High School. And uh, Coach, uh, good morning. Good morning, Brad. Glad to be here. It's good to be back in studio with you this morning. Uh, coming off a loss last night after traveling over to Monroe County. And uh, Coach, uh, kind of kind of give me a little snapshot of, of kind of where you are this morning. Well, I think that uh, in, obviously we still have a lot of things to work on. We came out on the wrong end of it last night. But I, I think in, in some aspects we, we – uh, made some progress offensively. We, you know, got the ball to some uh, some other guys to hopefully help us down the road offensively and, and in our passing game. And you know, I thought, you know, at times again we play we did some good things, and then other times we struggled and struggled on the defensive end at times with with some of their running game. And then again, sometimes we did okay. It's you know, I think our biggest uh, issue right now with our entire football team on both sides of the ball is consistency, and we've got to get some consistency for us to uh, get back on the winning side of things. Yeah, you know, at, at talking about opportunities a little bit. Uh, man, they tried everywhere in the world to give us opportunity after opportunity there in the first half uh, with three turnovers and uh, just was never a time once we got that turnover instead of driving it down and, and just driving that nail down, you know, on them, we – you know, ended up having to punt or, or turn the ball back over to him. We did, and, you know, we did a good job. I mean, the the, the first fumble that they had, you know, uh, Zach Sneed came up and put a big hit on their running back, and he put the ball on the ground, and it popped out there about 20 yards, and, and we got on it. And then uh, the second turnover uh, was on uh, – they fumbled a punt, and uh, we were fortunate to get on that. And then uh, – I believe the quarterback fumbled again after driving it down there, and that was on a hit by Jared Hill. She came from behind and stripped the ball. So, you know, while we were giving up some yardage there in that first quarter defensively, on two of those occasions, you know, we created the turnover. And, uh, of course, they really gave us a, a gift when they muffed the punt and gave us the ball down there. And then we got a penalty. Uh, they gave, gave us a penalty, a 15-yard penalty. So we got down there inside the 20. And, of course, we didn't take advantage of it and give them credit. I mean, we they kept us out, and we've got to solve those issues once we get inside the red zone down there, and we've kind of struggled with that some all year. But, uh, you know, when a team gives you th three turnovers in the first half, uh, you know, we, we need to take advantage of a couple of those and try to get on top of them, and that changes the, you know, the, the way the game is called on their side and our side. And we've got to do a better job of, of taking advantage of those things. But, again, you know, Monroe County is a very good football team, and, and that's a team that's going to win eight or ten games and and have a good run in the playoffs in 2A. And so, you know, it's not like we were playing chop liver there. We were playing yeah. a pretty good team. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you talk about how much we didn't do or how we didn't execute, but the reason we didn't execute a lot of those plays was was definitely because of Monroe County's defense. I mean, they, they stayed in our face uh, the whole first half, and, and it really just seemed like that offensively we couldn't get anything going in the first half. Uh, you know, honestly, for our defense to, to keep them to only nine points going into half, really thought was a win for us after the way they moved the football. Well, ultimately it's about, you know, how many points are you scoring and how many points are you giving up. And a lot of people like to look at stats, and stats usually do tell the story. But, you know, at, at halftime it was, it was a nine to nothing game, and at that point it's still anybody's ball game. And, uh you know, and I, I told our kids at halftime, we, we went in at the half, and, and I felt, you know, you would have thought we were down 39 to nothing instead of 9 to nothing. And I'm like, I, you know, tried to emphasize, you know, listen, it's a 9 to nothing ball game. We're getting the football to start the second half. We, You know, if we'll get going, we're right in this, and we'll have an opportunity to win the game in the second half. Well, you know, let's, let's talk just a little bit about that second half. I mean, you know, after the after half, we came back out, and, and I, I think Monroe County did score. Uh, first, but you know we came right back, and and you know the boys never stopped on the offensive side of the ball. And in the third quarter, I mean we we actually that was the quarter where we put up our offense. 
Well, we got going a little bit and made some adjustments, adjustments on what we were going to do uh, in the second half. And uh, I think once we, you know, spread it out a little bit and, and completed some passes, it kind of, you know, thinned them out a little bit. And then we were able to run the football some. And, and uh, but, you know, we did, as, again, we did some good things at times. And, and uh, we got a lot of things that we got to clean up. It's just consistency and playing four quarters. And, and I don't think we've done that in a game yet this year. You know, you can look go all the way back to the very first game that, you know, we played a great first half against Metcalf. And then we just kind of stubbed our toe the second half. We haven't put together four quarters yet. And, and that's something that we've really got to do as we – you know, head towards our district games and play the better teams on our schedule. Yeah, you know, just looking at stats from last night, you know, in the first half, uh, we we ran 33 plays and had 42 yards of offense in the first half. Yeah, that's not going to win many football games. And, and, of course, ultimately it's about scoring points. And we we had opportunities to score points, especially when we had field position. And, you know, and sometimes in a game like that, you know, it's a low-scoring game. That, that's the way it's going to be. But when you get the ball down there on the, in the, the team's other, um, you know, in the red zone, you've got you to put points on the board. And, and we didn't do that last night. And we, we've certainly – you know, struggle with that through the first four games this season. You know, one, one thing we've talked about the last couple of weeks, uh, you know, that I've said is, you know, our penalties and holding our penalties to a minimum. And, you know, after going back and, and you know, looking over the game film this morning, uh, you know, we, we did have some penalties last night, and, and some of those penalties were, were negligent penalties. But, you know, we, we had a couple penalties last night that, that really turned the feel for Monroe County on, on a one in particular I could think of where uh, it was on one of the pass plays and Zach Sneed came up and what I thought made a tremendous play on the football and then they throw a flag and uh, you know that kept them alive in that drive because if I'm not mistaken that was like third and 20 and uh, you know then you know they get a first down out of that it was and you know pass interference is a judgment call by the official and of course I, I really expressed my dismay with that call especially <laughs> I thought that was poor judgment by, yeah. by the back judge. I, but, you know, but you know but again a pass interference call is one of those that's a judgment by the official and I thought Zach made a good break on the football you know the thing that we've got to clean up you know there was a drive in the second half we had a, a it was about third and 12 and we get a rough in the passer call that you know we just and, and it was a good call I mean you you can't just go and tee off on a quarterback after he's you know led foot now it was close but I probably would have called it too if I were the official I, I'm, I'm like he is I yeah. it this morning I would have probably yeah. thrown that flight that was that was another one and then you know I really couldn't see we had another uh late hit type penalty it, it was in the pile you know again it could have gone either way I mean you could probably make that call every play you know every sure. play you know that, that on a play like that but you know we did get some penalties last night got a couple of bad holding calls but you know the flip side of that is Monroe County had several penalties too and, and oh, that yeah. really hurt them and benefited us and you know it was a uh, I need to say it was it was a flag happy game uh, you know, sometimes you get games where there's a lot of penalties, and and, and you know, just this, this, uh, all officiating crews are kind of different sure. in, in what they're going to emphasize and whether or not they're really. Well, you know, you could throw flags every game on everybody at every level if you want to, you know, for holdings and all that type of stuff. And you know, the thing you want out of an officiating crew is, is consistency. And I thought those guys, the officiating crew last night, they were consistent and did a good job. There was just a lot of flags on both teams. Sure. Well, Coach, we're going to take a short break here and go uh, have a word from our sponsors. And uh, Brad Outland and Coach Jeff Griffith from Barron County High School will be back with Ask the Coach after these messages.